In short, we don't want an ugly woman in an upper class family. How can you believe an unattractive woman like you could be with a man like Mark? His parents kept insulting me, and I felt tremendous anger inside. I understand. I will leave for now. But you have made such insults on my family and me. Please never get involved with us. It will be a waste even you begged us in tears. My name is Dena. I'm a 25 year old office worker. My family used to be very poor. We used to eat stale bread every day to hold off hunger. We are a family of four my father, mother, my sister, and me. My father's salary was mostly spent on rent. My mother was sickly and could not go out to work. When my sister and I were young, we were always hungry. My life changed when I learned about finance in middle school. I think it was an extra curricular course. I learned that your level of education determines your income, and the higher your education, the more money you made. When I heard that, I decided to study hard and earn a lot of money to take good care of my family. I found my path with a simple thought process. From then on, I spent every waking moment studying. If you study so hard, you will get a fever and die, my father used to say. If I can't make a lot of money, I'd rather die. I brushed it off with a sassy remark, unlike a typical preteen. I studied hard and got good grades in school. Every time I got a perfect score on a test, my mom was very delighted and praised me. It made me happy to see her proud of me that I studied even harder. I got into high school on a scholarship for my excellent grades and continued to study hard so that I was able to graduate university without paying tuition. My education was very useful for job hunting. I was able to get a job at a major elite company. It's not the right way to describe, but the work was like a new game for someone like me who just studied all her life. The difference from studying was that effort did not always lead to good results. If I just worked blindly, I couldn't get any result at all. I thought this was very interesting. I searched for ways to apply my strengths to my work every day. I don't think not many fresh out of college colleagues thought like me. I have what you might call a unique value or personality. I thought it was thanks to my family's support that I could affirm my uniqueness. You are really hard working, Dana, and good at finding something you enjoy. I'm proud of you. I even want you to teach me from compulsory education. My dad complimented me. He was always unreliable, but no matter how poor we were, he was always smiling. Naturally, we became optimistic seeing such an attitude of his. I started studying hard because I wanted to be rich. But from some point, I was doing my best simply because I enjoyed it. Not because I was desperate to save my family or anything like that. It was like a kid who wanted to become a baseball player and practice hard. My mom, too, never complained about money. And she was good at making anything by herself. She was an excellent seamstress from learning at fashion school. Clothes, backpacks, and pouches of my sister and mine were all her handmade. What's more, they were also cute and fashionable. The kids at school used to ask us where we got them. My sister became interested in fashion, just like mom. And enrolled in fashion school. Although there were many episodes of poverty, we were content and enjoyed our life. What? That's for real? Yes, for real. Once, my sister and I brought home some leftovers from school lunch and gave them to our parents. Ha 
<laughs> That's amazing. My colleague laughed when he heard my story. My episodes of poverty were taken as fascinating life stories by others. I found myself in the position of an interesting person in the company. Well, I might have been the type of person to be teased and played dumb in school. I was sure my dad's easygoing nature must have been embedded in my DNA. I was happy to have a good relationship with my colleagues as well as enjoy work. It was like I had a different kind of joy than when I was studying. My life was exciting every day, and then I had a fateful encounter. It was at the company's welcome party for new employees. I decided to grab a drink with my colleagues after the party. One of them said, I know some others from different departments, so I will invite them. New recruits from other departments joined us. That was when I met Mark. He looked nice and handsome, but not a womanizer type. I fell in love with him at first sight. Everyone began to mingle as the night progressed. While Mark went to the restroom, my colleague moved to the empty seat from my side. When he came back, he saw his spot was taken and naturally took the empty seat next to me. Oblivious to my pounding heart, he started a conversation. You're Dina. I heard you're exceptional. If I'm not wrong, you went both high school and university on scholarship. Ah, uh, yes. I'm very grateful for the free tuition. Ha ha ha. Is that the only reason? Sure. My family didn't have a lot of money. I see. So you studied hard to support your family? No, I enjoyed it. Even though we were poor, we were happy. I see. You have a unique charm. What? I was surprised by his remark, but he said it with a serious face. I didn't know what he meant by it, and it made me laugh. From then on, whenever I ran into him at work, I stopped and chatted lightly. He must have had become quite interested in me, so one day he asked me out to dinner. He seemed more relaxed than usual when it was just the two of us. He was gentlemanly but friendly, and I felt like we were getting closer. He invited me to dinner several times after. One day he confessed his feeling for me. I didn't expect him to fall in love. I was more ecstatic than surprised, so I accepted him. Our relationship started. He treated me very well and came up with various date plans. I felt safe and fuzzy when I was with him. I wanted to be with him forever. I found that he felt the same way when he proposed me three years later. I felt joy from the bottom of my heart and immediately said yes to him. Thus, we became engaged. We wanted to announce to both of our parents in no time. Mark said, First of all, I'm going to marry a precious daughter, so let's meet your family. We decided to tell my parents first. My family liked Mark immediately. Mark too said, Your parents are like peas in a pot. And then, it was time for me to meet his parents. As a bride to be, the first impression was very important. I was very nervous as I chose my clothes and went to get my hair done. I put more time into makeup too. After my mom and sister checked my look in detail, I left the house in immaculate style. And then I went to the house of Mark's parents with him. It was a mansion that stood out from the other houses. After we started dating, I found out that his dad was CEO and the family was affluent. In other words, he is the only son of a distinguished family. I guess that's why he seemed so noble from the moment I met him. When he pressed the intercom, 
His mother answered and opened the front door. Mark, welcome back. Hi, mom. Is she your fiance? It's great to finally meet you. I'm Dana. Oh, come inside. She looked me up and down as she invited us in. I didn't expect her to like me from the start, but I had to put an effort. His mother led us into the huge and luxurious living room where his father was already waiting on the sofa. Well, I'm glad you're here. Please have a seat. His father politely said, but there was a certain tension in the air. It was like if he was interviewing me for a job position. I'm Mark's father, and I run a company called 5X. His company has always been on the rise and successful. His parents bragged about their status. Dana, you work for the same company as Mark, don't you? That means you must be exceptional. She is the most promising employee in the company. She was an honor student in both high school and college. I see. I was a little embarrassed to be praised by Mark. Maybe his mother was jealous and made a surprising remark. Well, it doesn't matter how good your education is, but your face. You're a little too ugly. What? He and I were both utterly dumbfounded to hear such a remark. What are you talking about, mom? Mark was furious, but his mother didn't care and continued. I'm just telling you the truth. You're going to follow in your father's footsteps and become CEO in the future. So the woman next to you must look beautiful. His mother's statement made him even angrier. What in the world? It's nonsense. I love her for who she is, regardless of her looks. She's not a bad looking woman to begin with. Apologize to her. Mark was boiling and demanded an apology. His father's pride was hurt, and he got equally angry. How dare you speak to your parents like that? Can't you understand that your mother is concerned for your own good? We are just saying. We don't want an attractive woman in an upper class family. We won't allow this marriage. Get out of here. His father gestured me to get out with a wave of his hand. What is wrong with you, Dad? I don't need your permission. I will marry her on my own. Hold on. We won't allow you to do such atrocity. Right. You are just being fooled by her. She may not have a pretty face, but she's smart. She's brainwashing you like a con artist. That must be it. You talk to him as well. Just tell him you're not good enough for this house. How can you believe an unattractive woman like you could be with a man like Mark? I'd love to see the face of your parents who raised you to be such deceiving. They must be good for nothing. His parents kept insulting, and I felt tremendous anger inside. I understand. I will leave for now. But you have made such insults on my family and me. Please never get involved with us. It will be a waste, even you begged us in tears. To which they laughed out loud. Who's going to beg who? Are you really smart? I think you're just crazy. I ignored their disrespect and said, Sorry to have bothered you, and left their house. Mark tagged behind me and apologized. I'm really sorry about my parents. Never mind. You were trying to save me. But they were so rude to you. I'm really disappointed in them. Lately, my dad acts like a tyrant at work. He doesn't seem to maintain a good relationship with his employees. I think he's getting too arrogant. Well, my mom is always being like that.
so I don't think she will ever change. I see. I was grateful that he grew up to be a good man in such a family. Oh, by the way, that thing you said about never getting involved with your family? Yeah, you got it? I was really angry to tell you the truth. That's why I blurted out such a thing. But if you don't want me to, I won't. Go ahead. They deserve it. You gotta give them a good beating. I got his permission, so I went right ahead with my plan. I'm in a CEO's office at some company right now. Dad, you think he's gonna call you soon? I hope so. Oh, here it is. Yes, hello. My dad put the call on speaker. H hello? What happened? You suddenly want to cancel the contract? It's a shame, but I got a good reason to do so. What? What is it? You insulted my daughter and my family, didn't you? You're the father of Mark, right? Huh? I heard you treated my daughter well when she visited you. Oh my god, you mean Dana is your daughter? Yes, my sweet precious daughter. Are you called her ugly? I, I am so sorry. I don't even know how to apologize. You don't have to apologize. I will never accept it. I don't mind about what you said about me. I was certainly not a good parent. I will never forgive you for insulting my daughter. I don't care if it's an abuse of my authority or called too emotional. My company will terminate the contract right now. No, no. if such an important company pulls out, what would happen to mine? None of my business. Just live your life of integrity and not make fun of people's appearance. Then he hung up the phone. Thank you, Dad. I feel better now. I got a bit emotional. I'm sorry, Mark, for being such a jerk to your father. No, no, please don't worry about it. I'm glad you gave my father a hard time. Actually, my dad currently runs an IT company. He's a geek who loved computers so much that he even assembled his own. When he was dating my mom, he worked an office job to suppress his desires. After my mom asked him, isn't there something you really want to do? He took a plunge, quit his job, and began to devote himself to what he loved. After my sister was born, he started teaching computer classes in the neighborhood as a temporary income. Other than that, he spent all his time working on what he liked. Eventually, he was able to create an inexpensive high-performance computer, which his friends wanted. So he started selling them at a reasonable price, then word spread, and many orders started coming in. Once the demand became high, there was no choice but to turn it into a business. Hence, my father started his own company to sell his computers. The sales increased and as more money came in, he invested in the production of more advanced products. Before he knew it, the company had grown in size and started dealing with other businesses. But that didn't change my dad's attitude at all. He's still passionate about what he wants to do. That's why I'm doing what I want to do and following my dreams too. No matter how wealthy we become, we still have the same heart as when we were poor. Mark's father was fired when the shareholders found out that he was the cause of the termination of the contract. As a result, he became unemployed. Because his mother refused to admit it and kept the same lifestyle, their savings dwindled down. They even had to sell the mansion. One day, his father came to my dad begging in tears, but my dad didn't forgive him. My daughter told you to never get involved with us, right? 
he turned him away. Mark cut ties with his parents and married into my family. He is now working hard at my dad's company to take over his business one day. I told him, you don't have to take the responsibility. You know you can do what you really want, right? He replied, what I want to do is to give you the life in which you can keep chasing your dreams. And then we got married. We are now living a very happy life as a couple. He is a wonderful husband. Also, Lena's family was all very captivating. Mark's parents were a bit carried away. I suppose too much obsession with success and money can twist a person's character. In any case, I'm glad that Dena was able to find happiness. I wish them a long happy life. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.